Hey guys, Mr. Backerberg here. In this video, we're going to take a look at slope fields. Now, before we get into what an actual slope field is, we're going to do this example where we graph out a general solution to a differential equation. So here we've got the equation dy dx equals the cosine of x, and we want to find the family of functions that would solve this differential equation. So what we're going to do is take the integral of both sides. So we're going to get y equals. Now, when we do the integral of the cosine of x, that turns into the sine of x, but we want to add on this unknown constant c on the back end to account for any potential constant that might have been in the original function. Now, if we're thinking graphically about this, what our graph is going to look like, we're going to have a sine graph, but because of this plus c on the back end, that's going to vertically translate the sine graph either up or down, depending on what that c value is. So let's go to our calculator. So in our calculator, what I'm going to do is hit the stat button and then select edit. And in my list one, I'm going to enter in some information. Now, if you already have stuff in there, you'll want to clear it out. Make sure you hit your clear button and not the delete button. Now, what I'm going to do is enter in a whole bunch of values in here and I'm going to run from negative five up to positive five. So I'm going to go negative five, hit enter, negative four, and I'm doing this all the way until I get to positive five. And then what I'm going to do is go into my y equals screen and I'm going to type in the sine of x, but then on the back end, I'm going to put plus and then I'm going to look for my list one in blue, which is right above the one. I'm going to go second one. So it puts in list one. Now, when I hit graph, what it's going to do is take each one of those values that we just entered into list one, and it's going to create a separate graph with each of those numbers attached on the back end of this sine function. So because we entered in values from negative five up to positive five, then when I hit graph, it's going to show pictures of sine graphs shifted down five units and up five units and everything in between. So this is accounting for some potential unknown C values on the back end of that sine function. Now it doesn't account for everything. We only used integer values from negative five up to positive five, but we know that there are integer values below negative five and above positive five. And there's no guarantee that our constant value on the end of our function is even an integer value at all. It could be some fraction or decimal value. But what we end up with when we graph out the general solution of a differential equation is an entire family of parallel curves. And again, that shouldn't be surprising. All we're doing is changing the C value that's on the end of that sine of X function. So if we've got positive C values, it'll shift us up however far that C value is. Or if we've got negative C values, it'll shift us down by that negative C value amount. But there's a way that we could have predicted the appearance of this family of curves from just the differential equation itself. And that's what's going to lead us into this idea of slope fields. Now, we need to remember that a derivative really means the slope of a function at a given point. And a differential equation is an equation that involves a derivative. So a differential equation gives us the slope at any point x comma y. And we can use that information to help us draw a small piece of the linearization at that specific point. And that's going to approximate the solution curve that would pass through that point. And if we continue to repeat that process at many different points, that'll yield an approximation called a slope field. So in this example, what we're going to do is construct a slope field. So we want to construct a slope field for the differential equation dy dx equals the cosine of x. Now we're going to strategically pick our x values so that we can use what we know about the cosine at those specific x values to draw in some little line segments to approximate our slopes. And the first types of ordered pairs that we're going to look at are ordered pairs with an x value of zero and some unknown y value. Now, if we were to take that x value of zero and plug it into a cosine function, the cosine of zero is one. So that's telling me that at any point where the x value is zero, we're going to draw some tiny little segments that have a slope of one. 
So if we start right at the origin at that x value of 0, if we draw in a line with a slope of 1, it'll look approximately something like that. But instead of just drawing it there, I'm going to draw it at a bunch of different places along this y-axis because all of those points would have an x value of 0. So I can draw in a line with a slope of 1 right here, and right here, and right here, and right here, and I can do this all along this y-axis. So this is kind of our first set of lines that we're using to draw our slope field. And then if we think about ordered pairs that would have an x value of pi over 2, well the cosine of pi over 2 is 0. So at all the x values of pi over 2, we're going to draw in little segments that have slopes of 0. So this first grid mark over here, I'm going to let that represent pi over 2. So if I draw in a line with a slope of 0, that's a flat horizontal line. And again, I'm going to do that at all of these different y value heights. So flat horizontal lines along all of those. And if we considered x values of negative pi over 2 as well, then we're going to end up with something similar because the cosine of negative pi over 2 is also 0. So along this first grid mark on the left-hand side, I'm going to draw in a bunch of flat horizontal chunks there as well. And then if we look at x values of pi and also negative pi, for both of those, the cosine of pi is negative 1, and the cosine of negative pi is also negative 1. So along this next grid line, I'm going to draw in line segments with a slope of negative 1. And I'm going to do that same thing on this left-hand side over here. This would be negative pi. So again, drawing in all of these different segments, this is constructing a slope field. Now if we go another grid line over, that would be 3 pi over 2. Or if we went to the left, that would be negative 3 pi over 2. So if we looked at the cosine of 3 pi over 2, that's going to give us an answer of 0. Or if we did the cosine of negative 3 pi over 2, that's also going to give us an answer of 0. So again, I'm going to draw in a bunch of flat horizontal chunks along my next grid line over to represent all of those zero sloped areas. And then if I go one more grid line over, that would be 2 pi. Or if I went to the left hand side, that would be negative 2 pi. And if we did the cosine of 2 pi, that's going to be 1. And also if we did the cosine of negative 2 pi, that's also going to be 1. So again, at these grid lines, we're drawing in little line segments that have a slope of 1. So if we look at this pattern with these different slopes where we're going up, flattening out, and then coming back down, we sort of see that sine wave starting to build itself in there. Now if I was to actually draw in a sine wave with an amplitude of 1 going through the origin, then we can see how these little chunks of lines that we drew in really do follow that sine graph solution to this differential equation. Now the more little segments that you draw in, that can give you a better visualization of the slope field, but that can also get pretty tedious. But there are nice technology tools that we can use to construct a slope field pretty quickly. Now speaking of technology tools that we can use to help us generate a slope field, I just went into Google and typed in slope field generator, and this is one on a program called GeoGebra. And what we can do is up here on the top left hand corner, we can type in whatever function we want. So I typed in that cosine of x, since that's what we were just drawing. And we can see that our slope field that it generates looks very similar to the picture that we just drew. Now the nice thing about this program is that we can adjust the density of our lines, so having fewer lines, or we can have it draw in a whole bunch of lines for us. And also what we can do is adjust the length of our lines, so having shorter lines. Or if I lengthen those out, we can see that it almost actually connects all of those different segments together. And again, we can sort of start to visualize all of these different sine waves happening in here. Now in this example, we're going to use a calculator to help us construct a slope field for the differential equation dy dx equals x plus y, and we're going to sketch a graph of the particular solution that passes through the point to zero. And I'm going to use that GeoGebra program that I just showed you guys. 
So in our website, I've got the X plus Y typed in and it'll generate this slope field for me. Now what I'm gonna do is turn up the density so that it has the most lines possible. And I'm also gonna lengthen those lines so that they almost connect so that we can start to see these lines of our graph forming. Now the nice thing about this website is that it also lets us plot out a solution. So down on the bottom left, I'm gonna hit solution A, and we said that we wanted to go through the point two zero. So I'm gonna take this dot and I'm gonna drag it up to that point two zero. Then this line that's drawn in is the specific solution to this differential equation going through that two zero point. That's gonna be it for this video. Thanks for watching.